Ladies and gentlemen, I now request Dr. Shashi Tharoor to release the book Light on the Burnt Horizon by giving a copy to Father Joseph Violin. Our uh, president for the occasion, Father Sebastian Thakedat, the man I admire greatly, an uh, incomparable cineast and a distinguished resident of our Thiruvananthapuram, Sri Adur Goparakrishnan. Father Syriac Maratil, who invited me to this event. Father Joseph Vailil, whom I've just had the pleasure of presenting the book to. Sri Paul Kallanod, the renowned artist. Sri Vinod, Father Joseph, Joseph Vattaparambil, Father Kurian Chalangadi, Dr. Biju John, and I would probably say today, above all, the editor of this splendid volume, Father John, John Mannaratara. <laughs> Distinguished members of the audience, students, friends. I'm really very, very pleased to have had the pleasure of inaugurating, uh, I beg your pardon, of releasing this marvelous volume here following the inauguration by, by Sri Adur Gopalakrishnan. Adurji, or Veli Veli, or Tanu, Malayalam, or some Sairi Khan. They have none night to proceed in Chagarna Minka obligation. Karnanilla, Pratish English, Edi or Pusta, English, the publisher, the Pusta de Kurche, and English under Vaka Parnal Iricum, either Malayalikim, Miro the Mandal and the Jericuno. So, if I can say a few words in English about this book, I um, was struck indeed that having just myself published a book with darkness in the title. I've been invited to release a book with light in the title. And that, I think, is a particularly happy set of circumstances because the darkness that was inflicted upon our country needed the light of political and social reform in the 19th and 20th centuries. And I think one of the striking things about Father Kuriakos Elias Chavara was that Somehow he has not found mention in the list of the great 19th century reformers of Kerala. Everyone here talks about Sri Narayana Guru and God knows he deserves it. Extraordinary figure. Everyone talks uh, to perhaps a slightly lesser degree about Chattambi Swami and about Mahatma Ayankali. But Father Chavara, who was older than all of them and whose social reform actually preceded theirs, uh, somehow gets left out. And I think this book, particularly after it is also reprinted in a less, uh, shall we say, a more affordable edition, should help correct that misconception. Because there is no doubt that in every respect, Father Chavara, now the saint Elias Chavara, should figure in anyone's appreciation amongst the greatest social reformers of the 19th century, and one could argue of modern Kerala as a whole. It is very striking, in fact, that Adurji rightly said that all his knowledge of Father Chavara has come to him through Malayalam. And I think that, in fact, has been the one lacuna, the one gap in Kerala's and India's and the world's appreciation of Father Chavra's contributions is how little has been available in languages other than Malayalam to spread the news about his extraordinary life and accomplishments. Today's book, Light on the Burnt Horizon, fills that gap admirably. Father John Manaratara has assembled an absolute galaxy of contributors uh, there is literally no one of any eminence in Kerala culture who has been left out. We have historians like M.G.S. and A. Sridharamanan. We have, of course, literary figures. Paul Zachariah has contributed a marvelous essay. There are many others. M.T. Vasudevan Nair has the first essay. There are people from all walks of life. Virendra Kumar, as an eminent newspaper publisher, makes it a point to write about the printing press that that Father Chavra established, which was the third printing press in the whole of Kerala. And he established in a little, small, obscure place, but of course from there was able 
to generate many, many volumes that had significant impact. On top of that, you have his myriad accomplishments. When you look at the life that is assembled in the beautifully produced pages of this book, you see a poet and lyricist, a liturgical writer of no mean accomplishment. You see letters from him written in the Syrio-Chaldean script, which is quite extraordinarily beautiful to behold and also very um, difficult to master. I think there are very few practitioners uh, of that language and script today. You see in uh, Father Chavara's work, uh, as has already been said by Adurji, the life of a karma yogi, a man of action, a man who didn't rest, a man who combined a deep spiritual devotion which came to him in an epiphany in childhood at the age of 10 or 11. He joined the seminary as a teenager and spent his entire life in the church. But if you think of men of the church as men of contemplation, men of searching for these spiritual absolutes, well, Father Chavara was very much more than that. He was a man of action. And it was he, I think, more than anyone else, who contributed to the, what is today the Christian church's reputation throughout India, but certainly, first of all, in Kerala, that one of the principal obligations of the church is to society and in particular is to education. I think the name of Father Chavra will always be identified with education for all his other accomplishments and they were considerable. What he did to attach to every church a school, to open its doors to everybody, including the poorest of the poor, the Dalit community, for him to start a Sanskrit school at a time when Sanskrit was taught to a very narrow, privileged Brahmin elite, and to throw it open to people of all backgrounds, all castes, all faiths, for him to insist that education is a way of spreading the message of God to the world, I think was an extraordinary contribution which has never stopped growing in its impact upon Kerala and upon the rest of the country. In fact, one of the more amazing things to discover from this book, if I didn't know it, perhaps all of you did, was that way before MGR and Jayalalitha, way before the communist governments in Kerala, way before the UPA in Delhi, Father Chavra introduced the Uchakanyi, the midday meal in the schools, by giving children food to eat. Um, because if a child has a hungry belly, how is that child going to learn? He understood that and he did it. The other thing that I think we should highlight is the extent to which he was able to involve the community and really all communities, but particularly, of course, his own community, in his efforts. So this wonderful, wonderful idea of getting everyone to put aside a handful of rice from their daily food at their own homes and contribute it to the church so that it could be used to feed the unfed, to educate the unlettered, was a magnificent idea. Almost half a century, more than half a century later, we all know that... Uh, that uh, the NSS followed the same practice when they were trying, when Manat Padmanabhan was trying to establish uh, educational institutions, following the example of Elias Kurikos Chavara uh, for the NSS, he too had the same idea of going from house to house to get a handful of rice. But it was, in fact, Father Chavara who started that practice. It's quite astonishing when you look at all these extraordinary accomplishments uh, that this one man, lived only 66 years. 66 years is not a long time today. It wasn't a very long time in those days either. But he didn't waste a minute of those 66 years. And I think that too is a lesson that we can all imbibe. None of us knows how much time God has given us on this earth. We all wish for a long innings, a long opportunity to be able to make our contribution to this country, to our society, to the world. But if we keep waiting for the right time to come, we will accomplish nothing. Father Chavara started young and kept on going. 
And what was extraordinary about those 66 years he spent was how astonishingly impactful his uh, legacy has been, how much he has been able to leave behind in every field that he touched. His literary works are highly praised. Scholars have talked about how he even contributed to the invention of Malayalam vocabulary, the creation of new terms. His liturgical contributions were considerable. As a priest, his role in Indianizing the rituals of the, of the Christian church in India was of a great and lasting significance. The very lighting of the lamp today that we did was something that Father Chavara would have deeply approved of. Because in the earlier days, particularly the vision of Christianity preached by the Portuguese in the mid-16th century onwards, in Goa and elsewhere, was much more Western, not just in language and liturgy, but also in ritual and cultural practice. But Father Chavra understood that for Christianity to have deep roots in the soil of India and the soil of Kerala, it needed to belong on the soil in terms of being able to appeal to people used to certain ways of worship, certain times of worship, certain modes of worship. The chanting of prayers at dusk was a Hindu practice. He brought it into the practice of the Syro Catholic Church. And he did so at a time when that was actually the direct opposite of what the Portuguese were trying to preach. The uh, lamps, the bells, uh, a number of the, the hymns, the way in which he tried to show even the vocabulary used in referring to God and the divine borrowed heavily from the local prevailing vocabulary and the local prevailing habits. As a result of which, every Malayali Christian can proudly say I am a Christian and proudly say I am an Indian and can proudly say I am a Malayali without any apparent contradiction amongst any of these terms because religion was never seen as something that had come from a foreign land or followed foreign practices or followed foreign rites but was very much rooted in the soil of Kerala and of India. That too, I would say, was a signal contribution of Father Kurekos Elias Chavara. I could go on, but I know we have begun late, principally my fault, and we have also others who will add their words to this occasion. But I want to end by congratulating Father John Manaratara for what he has done to actually bring all of these aspects together in this magnificently produced book. It is really a work of art, quite literally. There's a lot of art in the book. Paintings, drawings, etchings, all marvelously rendered, printed with great clarity. And at the same time, the text is extraordinarily well put together because Father John has not only commissioned new pieces from contemporary writers of great eminence and distinction, he has also found earlier material. So, for example, we have a speech that was delivered on the centenary of, um, of uh, Father Chavara's passing away in 1871. So that speech itself today is 45 years old. He has found it and put it in. We have found uh, 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 the speech delivered by President Venkatraman when the stamp was issued in the 1980s on Father Chavara. He has put that in. He has looked for material, he has looked for what uh, Pope John Paul II said at the beatification, as well as, of course, what the present Pope, Pope Francis, said on the occasion of a canonization of Father Chavara. So it really is a complete document. Now, it's such a handsome and beautiful volume that it will not be inexpensive to produce and to sell. So my only request to Father John is, in order to retain uh, the broader appeal that I hope this book will have beyond the libraries, the churches, and a few with deep purses who can buy it, I hope he will also bring out an inexpensive paperback edition with fewer illustrations or maybe just one or two illustrations, but with all these texts preserved that will actually convey to an ordinary readership, people who can't afford this beautiful book, the essence of the life, message, and purpose of Saint Kuriakos Elias Chavara. With those words, I want to again congratulate the editor, the author, the publishers, and the church on this magnificent achievement. I think in all humility I can say 
as Adur Gopalakrishnan also implied, that we are very proud to be in one of the institutions that he would look on with joy as amongst his legacies, uh, this great highly respected school. Uh, as, I was, uh, as it was mentioned earlier, I've also spoken at Christ University. These are all institutions of more recent vintage, uh, which came after his lifetime, but they would not exist without his contribution and without his having brought the spirit of education into the work of the church. Uh, so let me say that uh, we are standing in, th in this institution, created directly or indirectly, by the great institution builder that we are honoring today. And I do want to say to you all, all the very distinguished fathers uh, uh, sitting on the dais, that though he is of your church and he is your inspiration, Father Saint Kuriyakos Elias Chavara belongs to all of us, to all Malayalis, to all Indians, and to all those who believe in the greater purposes of humanity. Thank you. Nandi Namaskaram. Jai